Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. I'm Kamiko Love from thebudgetmom.com and today I am showing you and answering a question that I get all the time. Now, I am a weekly meal planner. Okay, it means I go grocery shopping every week for my meal plan, but I'm also a monthly meal planner as well. I got questions, Miko, how do you organize and create your meal plan? So today, I'm gonna do a top overview and show you the tools and what it looks like when I'm creating my, my monthly meal plan. So let me show you the new monthly meal plan worksheet inside the Budget by Paycheck workbook and the personal planning spread inside the Liverage Planner, because I use both. And I'm gonna show you how do I organize all of my printed recipes. So every single month, I start out with a monthly meal plan spread. Now currently, I am using the full size Peony Budget by Paycheck workbook. This is a new worksheet inside of the workbook. And you can see, I'll flip through December. I'm actually gonna sit down on Saturday and do my December monthly view for my meal plan. But essentially, it's just a blank monthly calendar that looks like this at the end of every month in the Budget by Paycheck workbook. I like starting out with a monthly view because I'm able to plan around holidays, events, or maybe there's an event where I have to utilize leftovers a little bit differently. Thanksgiving is a perfect example of that. We all have leftover turkey, leftover Thanksgiving goodies. I wanna be able to utilize that in my meal plan. I was also on vacation in November, so I knew, and I know myself well, the day before and after I get back from vacation, I don't wanna cook. Me, because I don't have any food in my fridge before I leave. And when I get back, I'm tired, exhausted. I wanna unpack and get settled back in. I'm not gonna to wanna to cook that day. So I'm able to plan around those. Okay, these are takeout days. I'm eating out these days. It can be in my budget. It's in my meal plan. And then I'm able to pick days where I utilize leftovers. Now, especially for Thanksgiving, like we had turkey pot pie soup, leftover Thanksgiving casserole. We did end up, um, one of these leftover stickers that you see here, we did leftover turkey tacos. So it's just able to plant, and birth, my birthday was November 15th, so I know I'm not gonna be needing to cook that day. It just, it's easier to meal plan and far out in advance if you're able to do it monthly because you're able to plan, plan around all the different things happening throughout the month. That being said though, I'm also a weekly meal planner, which means that I use the recipes that I pick out on my monthly view and I put them into a weekly form. Now this is the Live Rich Planner and I use it in my real life for more of my personal planning. I'm using the Live Rich Planner full size sunflower theme, but this is the personal planning spread I'm able to break that down into even breakfast and snacks, lunches and dinners. So I'm able to break that down even more. Now on the monthly spread, I really only look at my dinners and my sides. In the weekly, I'm able to break that down into lunches, breakfast, snacks as well. I'm able to create a shopping list based on my meal plan for that week. So I go to the grocery store every Saturday. It helps me from things spoiling or having to throw things out. It's just better for me to do it weekly. So I'm able to create a shopping list from this weekly meal plan that came from my monthly meal plan. Now, a lot of people say, Miko, that's too much work. I don't wanna do all that. But think, once you have your monthly meal plan done, all you have to do is create that shopping list and go. And you know already what you have to cook. So also on here is your like your important reminders, your goal trackers, but the, these, this top area is what I really use for my weekly view. Now, that being said, Miko, how do you determine what recipes to use? Now, I am a big cookbook lover. I have a ton of hardcover cookbooks, but I also, some of the best recipes that I have found and some of my go-tos actually came from online, Pinterest. And I print those recipes out. And a lot of time I like to make the same thing again and again and again, especially if I love the recipe. 
You want to create your recipes based on what you know you have at home first. You want to always have inventory of your fridge, pantry, and freezer. Now, a lot of the time, the recipes I pick is based on the protein that I have at home, the meat that I have out in my freezer, because protein is pretty much the most expensive ingredient in any recipe. So once I know my protein, I go out to my freezer, I'm like, oh man, I have a lot of chicken. I have a lot of boneless chicken, skinless chicken breasts. I can make recipes based around that meat that I have at home. It's gonna cut your meal, your grocery list down significantly if you are basing your recipes on what you have at home, pantry, fridge, and freezer. So the question becomes, Miko, how do you organize all these printed recipes that you have been doing and printing for years? What does that look like in your system? I have a couple goodies for you. This is my recipe binder. Now, one of the great things about this is I'm going today going to give you access to the printables that I use in my, in my recipe binder. They're in the free resource library on thebudgetmom.com. I'll put a link in the description of this video. But this is how I organize all my printed recipes that I print off from Pinterest that I absolutely love, that I know I'm gonna go to over and over and over again. So I have my table of contents. I have appetizers and snacks, soups and stews, sauces, spreads and jams, breakfast, side dishes, dinners and casseroles, desserts and drinks. I get a lot of questions like, Miko, where do you get these clear page protectors with the tabs? I'll put a link in the description of the video, but they look like this. I get mine from Amazon and essentially they're just eight tabs, but they're clear page protectors as well. They're called recipe sleeves. I'll put a link to that um, Amazon link in the description of my video, but that's what I use for all of my table of contents items. I do use, and you'll see here, so I have my appetizers and snacks, soups and stews. You can see I have some of them printed out and saved in here my sauces, spreads, and jams. Now, there are something that I do want to mention here. My side dishes are broken down into actual side dishes, but I also have my bread recipes. And I just put a little tab. You can get these tabs at Staples or really any office store. They're just little clear tabs. And I have my bread recipes. I do the same thing with my dinners. I have my dinner, category, but my dinner is then organized into beef, pork, lamb, fish, poultry, and veggie. That just makes it easier for me to find the recipes that I want. And if it doesn't really like fall, if it's a pasta or something like that, it goes on the top here. You can see I have a, a Instapot tortellini Alfredo. I have penne and sausage. So those just go on the top here. And then if I have, and then I have all my beef uh, recipes. The Clear page protectors that I use for organizing my table of contents, they, you can actually buy a big pack. You can get them from Staples or Amazon. I get mine from Staples, they just like this. You can get a whole box of 200 of them. And they're great too because my kiddo can use them for his projects as well. But I have, you can see I have all my dinner organized, all of these different, and you're gonna get access to these printables too, all of these covers. And then I have my desserts. Oh, there's my veggie. And then I have my desserts and then I have my drink recipes. It's also going to come with recipe cards in the printables as well. If you don't want to print out the recipe, you'd rather write them out. There's printable cards in there as well in that printable set. So that's what I do to organize my printed recipes. I just keep them in a binder there in my, in my kitchen. I can grab and go. It's organized. I can find things quickly. So remember, I start with my monthly view. I go through my inventory, my pantry, fridge, and freezer, come up with my recipes. Of course, all planned around what's happening in my real life. I organize that into a weekly view, weekly grocery list, and then my printed recipes, that's how I organize that. Starting out with this monthly view really does help me stick to my meal plan. So have you ever done this? You created your meal plan, you went to the grocery store, bought all your ingredients, you know exactly what you're gonna make, you go out throughout the week and you realize you don't wanna make what you planned on your meal plan. I think we've all been there. 
for me, the, the reason we put the monthly meal plan view inside of the budget by paycheck workbook is because I felt like meal planning is such a huge part of the budgeting process. Your food budget really is one of your biggest expenses throughout the month. So we really felt it was important to include that. But I also felt that, you know, so many, so much of the time meal plans are created, okay, this recipe, this day, this recipe, create a bunch of recipes for all the days, get a grocery list, call it a day. But really a meal plan should be really based and created around what's happening in your real life, your holidays, your events, your night out with your girlfriends, night out with your parents, whatever. Kid has a birthday party, you know it's gonna be late, you're gonna know you're gonna to wanna to utilize your Instapot. Maybe you have a, you know it's gonna be a long work day or week that week, you know you're gonna to wanna to probably pick out some slow cooker recipes. By creating and basing that meal plan, not only around what you have in your fridge, pantry, and freezer, but also the things that are happening in your real life is gonna make it easier to stick to that meal plan. Now creating that weekly meal plan is also helpful for me because it helped me decrease my food waste. Now I know a lot of people who meal plan for the entire month, they go grocery shopping, but they save their perishables, their fruits and veggies for weekly grocery hauls, and that's fine too. But I just felt like doing that weekly grocery list and going to the grocery store every Saturday really has helped me with my meal planning. Now also with the recipe binder, this has been a godsend in my life because there have been so many months where I'm like, I don't know what to make and I don't have time to go and search for a bunch of recipes or go through my cookbooks and find recipes. That's why I've been meal planning for years and so I've worked up quite a, a large stack of printed recipes that turned out to be my favorite go-to recipes, especially if you have picky eaters at home, kids or spouse or whatever. Your handy dandy recipe binder, you can go to those recipes. You know you love them. You know that they worked when you made them and they ended up turning out great. So that's what I love about having my printed recipes organized and easily accessible. So on the months that I don't feel like picking out recipes, that's why I kind of feel like these subscriptions, these monthly food subscriptions where they give you a meal plan don't really work. And you can technically do it yourself if you keep a recipe of all your favorite printed recipes as you go along. Look, I look, I have my meal plan recipe subscription right here and it's free and I created it. I'm giving you access to those free printables as well. I'll put a link in the description um, down below. If you found this video helpful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe. Put a put chapstick on, my bad, okay. So starting out with this monthly, okay, starting over, okay. We're shooting our very last YouTube video right now. Okay, I'll let you know when we're done. <laughs>